Hello everybody, it's Robert Earl here at the Eco Ranch in West Texas. Once again, I'm up on the roof. Well, what am I up on the roof for? Today, it occurred to me that we hadn't talked about my rainwater collection system. See, we have a new, new fellow in town here, a friend who's become a friend. His family name is Rainwater. I was talking with a guy on, um, um, on Facebook about rainwater collection. Well, it just occurred to me we hadn't talked about rainwater here. Let's talk about rainwater, rainwater collections, a few water basics as well along the line. You know, it's been said that the next world war is going to be fought over water. And it's a pr pretty compelling argument for it. Uh, water is, fresh water makes up something like 0.001% of the world's water. Uh, and I mean, that's in its liquid form, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure they're not talking about um, Greenland, which is fast becoming liquid in Antarctica, but I now live in an area where our annual rainfall is 10 to 12 inches a year. So what do you do? You do rainwater collection. So let's take a look at some of the things I've done here. Of course, number one, if you're gonna collect rainwater, you need a surface to collect it off of. I'm gonna show you that surface and I'm gonna show you something I designed myself, which I very seldom do I design anything myself. Everything else I have taken from other people on the uh, internet. Let's show you what we've got, what, what I'm doing. We'll talk about it a little bit. I think you'll get a kick out of it. And if you want to, uh, if you're looking into rainwater collection for yourself, Use this as a guideline to get out there and research what's out there. So, let's start. All right, so I'm behind the camera right here. But what you're looking at is a gutter that I designed myself. Uh, and, and the reason I designed it was I, I knew how I was going to have to build the uh, roof when we moved uh, out here. I'm just going to pan down here as I talk. So, I knew that the design would not, I wouldn't be able to take the time uh, nor, nor have the uh, tools and the electricity when I first got here to, um, to design a, a guttering system the way it should be, the way it is in probably your home if you live in a residential area. So I designed this system that comes up above the, um, the level where the water is coming in from the roof and it actually traps it and captures it. So this was the gutter I used at first here uh, and I'm still using it. I'm using it to drain uh, this section of the roof, the green section here. My tripod's there. The green section is the horse stable and the uh, hay barn. Now, you get kind of an idea of where we're going to go eventually uh, when you look at these two sections of, uh, of, of uh, sand colored roof here. And they're just simply going to run out here. Um, the building will end right pretty much where that post is. I know I hear the wind and I apologize. It'll end where that post is and it'll end where that corner post is. So it is another over five, whoops, another over 5,000 square feet of roof here to go with the uh, almost 6,000 we have. When I say that, it's 4,500 over there. It's about 1,000 over here. And then these, these, you get a little bit better idea of the size of this roof when you stand on one corner and you look at the other corner over there that's almost a hundred feet away. This is a huge roof and because of that we get a tremendous amount of rain water when it rains. Doesn't rain often so we have to take advantage of it. That is most of the reason why I went ahead and built this huge structure here. We don't need this but we need the water. Now let me show you the gutter that I uh, that I've come up with uh, for this section. Now, because we built the first section, which is way down there past Wellesley, the um, gnome sitting on the um, fireplace, because we built that first section for that uh, gutter I just showed you, as I built the rest of this, I had to follow the same technique, which ended up dropping the gutter. Let me show you here. Dropping the gutter to this point. So the level of the gutter here is a good inch below where the water comes uh, off the roof. Now what that means is if we get a gully washer where that water is just roaring down here, it would overwash, completely go over the gutter. So I had to get a piece of flashing here, and we've got flashing that runs the entire length of this roof. Some's a little higher than the others, but um, it runs, and, it, and, and we've had a gully washer, and it did capture virtually all the rainwater. 
Now, we're going to go down on the ground, and I'm going to talk a little bit more and show you what else we have. Between the wind trying to come up and my wannabe directors back there giving me their cockadoodle-do on everything, like I said, um, we'll try to talk a little bit more. I'm out here at the, at, at the complicated part of the rain collection system, if you want to call it complicated. But, again, I'm going to give you a little bit more here. Why do rainwater collection? Well, it's very simple. I happen to live for a while in North Florida where you drill down 25 feet, you're hitting the, thank you. You're hitting the Floridan Aquifer, which is where most of the water for that serves all of Miami and that the fresh water comes from. That is renewable water. It's just below the surface. You don't have to get a witcher out there. You don't have to do anything. You just drill, you hit water. That's fine. But even at 25 feet, which Around here, we've got people going down six, seven hundred feet. One fellow recently, I think, went down 325 feet, paid $13,000 for the hole. He's still got to get pumped down there. And he was lucky that he hit water. If he had drilled 500 feet and not hit water, he still had to pay for that well. So it's much easier to go up 10 or 11 feet than it is to go down 25, 30, 500, 325, 700 feet, 1,000 feet and maybe hit water that's non-renewable, maybe hit water that's full of iron or, or, or sulfur stink or too much lime. Rainwater is pure, rainwater is sweet, and rainwater can be captured and be healthy and be stored in a healthy manner. I don't care what the butt crack building inspectors tell you. They're reading to you out of a manual that they read. That manual was, was, was printed and financed by Whatever industry, I know whomever it was that paid to get those regulations passed to force you to deal with a butt crack building inspector. It isn't for your own good, it's for somebody else's good, and that means that you're going back in here to put, take this and put it in his hand. So, rainwater safe, and I'm going to show you how and why. You've got to figure out if there's regulations in your town and how to deal with it. But let me show you what we did here, and I'll talk a little more about how good it is from behind the camera. You see the two tanks we have for right now. Those two tanks are 6,000 gallons of fresh water. Now let's get into the sweet water part of it. Water, the butt crack building inspectors will tell you, Oh, will will you'll grow algae in it? It'll get rancid. It'll get nasty. Well, yeah. If you're storing it in a tank where light can get through, light is going to stimulate algae growth. If you're stimulating algae growth, whoa, we're getting low on water in this tank. But if you're stimulating algae growth, then yes, that water is going to turn on you. But think about it. Light can't reach the water that is down underground that you drill down to. So all you have to, and, and that water, in some cases around here, we're dealing with prehistoric water that's millions of years old. When they drill down to it, they hit it, been down there for millions of years, it comes out sweet. The answer is, they make a green tank and they make a black tank. I opted for black. These tanks, no light can get through these tanks. I've had water sit as long as eight months in one of these tanks that we didn't have to use that was perfectly fine when it came out. We do treat it uh, with a, a few drops of bleach per gallon uh, just in case, but we really don't have to. I still treat it. Alternately, you can build a cistern, which I've mentioned in other videos. We're digging a cistern, so these are temporary. They'll eventually go away. But let me explain to you what happens after when the rain falls. The rain falls, the rain hits the roof, it runs into those gutters where we trap it. Now, that's simple. It falls down, runs along a pipe. When it runs along a pipe, the pipe goes into the tanks. Except that in a gully washer, where I desperately need a gully washer, I need every drop of water, and most of it comes in a gully washer, so I have to get, if I had to devise a way to get as much water as I can. And I also had to get clean water. So number one, this water comes along this pipe here. And the first stop for this water is that junction right there, where it drops down the pipe into this 15-gallon tank. It fills this 15-gallon tank up with water. 
that when I need to drain it, I just simply throw this valve here and I drain it down into my gray water system. Comes into here, fills this tank up, which fills this pipe up, and right there is something called a first flush. If you research first flushes, you can pay as much as $200 for a first flush system, or you can spend about $3 in parts like I did there. And I won't get into it too much, but what's in there, these are screws that keep a ball from plugging the bottom. There's no screws up there. The ball sits on these until this fills up, pushes the ball up, the ball plugs that, and then we go on to the next step, which in this case is now the first flush is full. The water continues on down there to another junction where it goes into the main tank. Now that's for normal rainfall. In other words, I'm going to use the one pipe for the normal rainfall. So, I'm up here on the, uh, on the ladder overlooking the, uh, the water tank. So, in a normal rainfall, the rain comes down through the tank, fills the first flush, comes around here to this pipe right there, comes through this pipe into the tank. That's a normal rainfall. So, in other words, I'm going to fill my tank mainly with this this pipe right here which is a two inch pipe it's all two inch pipe now we get a gully washer the two inch pipe can't handle it so it starts to back up well the first place it's going to back up is over here to that tank to that pipe rather you can see that pipe comes off and goes directly into the tank it backs up it goes in there now so far we have not had a rainstorm where we've gone beyond this. In other words, this pipe, the main pipe, and the second pipe have more than handled it. But let's say we get a biblical flood and it starts backing up into the uh, gutters. When it gets that high and it starts backing up into the gutters, that's where the third pipe here comes in. So I now have three pipes, or two inches, four inches, five and a half inches of water. That's a pipe five and a half inches wide is putting water into the tank. Now. If we get more rain than that, uh, first of all, my tanks are full. Secondly, I've got more to worry about than just that. So, that is the system. That's my rainwater harvesting system. It looks a little bit like a Rube Goldberg contraption, but once it's together, it works perfectly. It collects all the water we need. The simple formula is, for every square foot of roof you have, you get 0 0.62 of a gallon per inch of rain. That's a perfect world. You actually are going to get, by the time you have some overwash, a little bit of leakage, uh, the first flush, and stuff I don't even understand, you're really only going to get a half a gallon per square foot per inch of rain. So, I have, uh, right here in what we're looking at, I have uh, 4,500 square feet working. Divide 45 by 2, you get 2,250. I get 2,250 gallons of water for every inch of rain that falls from here. Over on the green roof, I have all that as well, but I was just talking about this. So that's your rule of thumb. So a half a gallon per square foot per inch. You got it figured out. You can calculate your needs. You can also do 101 things to conserve water, which is the responsible thing to do when there's 7 billion people and counting on the planet. You can take shorter showers. You can put a brick or two or three in the toilet. And if it doesn't flush the toilet properly, then stop flushing toilet paper down the toilet. Wrap it up. Put it in a, in, a, in a paper lunch bag if you have to, or wrap it up like a woman would wrap up her tampon, and if men ask, put it in the garbage. That reduces the amount of water you use. Don't leave the water run while you're sitting like this brushing your teeth. That water doesn't need to run. Turn it off. All those simple things are conserving, not rationing water. And there'll be plenty of water for all 7 billion people. And hopefully we'll find a solution to the 7 billion, but, it's, but at, at any rate, you'll have water that you've harvested that if you feel like wasting it you can waste it because it's certainly it's your water you collected it you didn't pay anybody no butt crack building inspector came out here and told you what you could do with it gives you an idea of what you can do if you live in a place like florida where you're going to get a lot of rain like michigan where you get a lot of rain you need less tanks you need less uh, roofing because you're getting more rain the more rain you get you calculate that all out too 
Very simple, very easy. It's another way that we can help help save the planet and also help to live in an environment like this. Debbie and I now have all the water we could possibly need, despite the fact that I said that tank's getting low. It's halfway, it's still got 1,500 gallons in it. So we've got plenty of water. You can have plenty of water if you do, if you follow the rainwater harvesting guidelines. There is a book by Brad, um, I'm sorry Brad, I can't remember your last name now. It's called Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond. Read it, study it. There's all sorts of videos out there. Mine is a long, boring one. There's all sorts of other ones out there. So while the wind comes up, I'm getting hot. It's 105 degrees out today. I'll say goodbye for now from Robert Earl at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas. See you next time.